Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're, we're talking about something that's actually very, very important. Something that I haven't really touched upon on my channel before. Uh, mainly because I've been tailoring everything to sort of the more beginner friendly tutorials. Which um, you'll notice a lot of it is just sort of getting things working. Um, and that's great. It's always lovely to see things working. But it, it's not always the most performative and um when i talk about performance i'm talking about the fact that um and this isn't just me uh lots of uh ue5 youtubers like gorka games ryan laley matt asplay and a bunch of others they use things that will basically create something called a hard reference and that is you have hard references and soft references but anything that is a hard reference is basically anything that is loaded into game on runtime. So the minute you start, um, basically it will just create store that data in your memory. And there's some things that you you will never avoid loading into memory. Um, it, it's it's something that needs to be balanced correctly. Um, but you just want to be careful about how much is being loaded in. And there's a, a wonderful way to to check this. If we go to our third person character. We know our third-person character is always loaded into memory. Um, so the minute you, you start and you possess that player, everything is loaded in that is involved with that third-person character. So this is kind of where a lot of your performance will be lost, is with this, this character, because everybody tends to um, kind of put all their code into their player because it makes sense, right? That's where you're going to be doing everything. Um, so so hard references are snuck in via this method and I'll, I'll show you an example so if we right click on our third person uh, icon here we've got two very useful things to see this we've got a reference viewer and we have a size map the size map will show you exactly how much of your memory is being eaten up from whatever's in your reference viewer so we'll look at the reference viewer first and you can see here that uh, we have this kind of flow diagram and this is kind of everything that is referencing our third person character. And this is everything that our third person character is referencing as well. And if we look at this, if we break this down, um, like so, um, that one can go there. We've got a couple of blueprint bits there. This is all your inputs. And what else have we got? We've got a few others down here as well. Uh, I already know what's in there, so I'm not going to bother opening it, but that's fine. So if we look at it like this, this is everything that our third-person character here is referencing in. And um, some of these aren't going to be uh, particularly bad, but others will be. Um, for example, all of your inputs, uh, so toggle camera, sprinting, everything, every time you make an input action, it will create a hard reference. However, performance-wise, it's not going to have uh, really any effect and there's no further knock-on so these uh, input actions aren't referencing anything else they're just purely being referenced by the third person character hence why they're not going to have um, any negative issues same for things like enumerations they are one standard variable which will not have any knock-on effect uh, going forward same for our uh, animation stuff so for example our Quinn and Manny blueprints and skeletal meshes, things like that, they, they won't have any further knock-on effect. We, we're not really casting to anything else from those um, those particular parts. Standard macros, as well, is another one that just comes in with the engine. You'll never get rid of it. It's just purely there to do things like your branches and stuff. Again, not really having too much of an effect on performance. These three, however, so... Interact BPIs, BPIs, again, tend to not have any knock-on effect either. So BPI, perfectly fine too. You can have quite a few of those, and it really won't uh, cause any negative issues. Uh, there's three things in here. We've got um, item info, um, buff increases, and master items, and things like that. The master item BP in there uh, will potentially cause an issue. Um, but again, we will get rid of that down the line. Um, and then we've got our projectile master and we've got our player inventory widget. Now the player inventory widget in this scenario 
is most definitely our worst um, offender. And if I bring up the size map, you'll see why. So if right click and we click on the size map. And uh, now at the moment, obviously this is this, uh, the, the mannequin and stuff is causing the most because it's just the biggest thing at this time of, uh, of working. But if you look on this right hand side, this will only ever get bigger as we make more items. Uh, at the moment, we only have the AK-47. So at the moment, the weapons really aren't going to be causing too much. But as we make more items, more guns, more clothing and food and whatever else our player is going to pick up on its journey is only ever going to increase this. Uh, for example, my They Remain, when I started doing this for that game, it was like 1.7 gigabytes of information. And uh, it was all being loaded in hard memory at the start of play, which is a, a terribly op unoptimized thing to do. So using this size map, we can kind of see exactly where our issues lie. And like I said, this player inventory widget probably would be fine, but because it references the master item BP and the item information, it's going to load up all of that information because it's an inventory. It's, it's designed to keep track of what items we have. Um, so by having this as a hard reference, it's going to cause us a, a major, major issue. So what can we do about it? Well, if we come into our third person character, we have this, uh, where we create our inventory. Every time we run a class, like, so for example, if we, uh, spawn actor from class, if we, uh, even run like get all actors of class, uh, creating a widget. Um, there's so many ways that can create a, you can create a hard reference um, that um, you really have to be careful. But there's a, a couple of wonderful things that we can use um, to, to kind of help combat this. And um, one thing we could do is promote this to a variable for a second and we'll call this, um, uh, we'll call it inventory widget uh, and we'll call it sr for soft reference and uh we're gonna make this uh so it already is a user widget which is great we're gonna create a um soft class reference and when we compile this so you can see here it's just purely base user widget class uh, we can basically decide what widget we want that to be. And it's already picked it for us because we created this from a, another variable, but we want it to be our player inventory widget. So this is a soft reference of user widget class. So it shouldn't create any hard reference. We'll have to unplug this. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, async load class asset. And what this will do is it'll take the player inventory soft reference here and it'll load up the class of that that reference and then we can just cast to use the widget class so we're not casting to the player inventory we're just casting to a base user widget class and then we can plug that in here and what this will now do is void that class reference so if we pull this up now compile and go back to our reference viewer if we refresh i might have to save this but we'll check um bear with me um if we go into our save menu now because we've got references to other stuff at the moment that need to still also be done we have still got obviously f uh, in uh, item info, master item, etc., to deal with, but we, you'll notice that the inventory is now disappeared. There's no inventory reference being called here, and we've lost about 1.5 megabytes just purely from removing that inventory. The item info and stuff, sadly, you won't get rid of uh, completely because we need it for things like our in house inventory and things like that, but it's just one reference dealt with. Um, the other side of that is um, on one of my other games, I also tried to spawn in an item to use. And um, the problem with that is it, it had the same effect where it created this 
hard reference to um, that particular item, which again had many knock-on effects. And um, what we can do with that is instead of creating a um, soft class reference, what we can do is if we create another one, and we'll change this to uh, an object and create a soft class object reference. We'll just call this um, object soft reference for now. And um, what we can do is if we compile, we can basically search for any item we want. Um, let's say, for example, we wanted our AK, wherever that is. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. M4, have we got an M4 in here? Assault rifle, I saw an assault rifle there. We can get our assault rifle B and um, we can drag this out now and we have an object reference to that and we can do something very similar, uh, an async load asset. And you'll see we have an object reference instead. So this can be really handy if you want to run a um, particular function from an object or if you wanted to run a BPI and you needed the object reference to uh, kind of send that message without actually casting to the object first. So you can do it that way as well. And we can also still cast, I believe, from this as well. So cast uh, to um, master BPI to Pago. So if we had, uh, I've done the projectile, but you get the idea. We can still cast. But in this um, instance, we would want to cast to actor. So base actor, very similar to what we are doing here. So that we still have the actor object reference, um, but we're not calling a specific cast. Because if we cast to the project, uh, the projectile, for example, we're going to get a hard reference to projectile. So this is just a few ways, but I, I, I really would advise researching more into hard and soft references because it will really, really help um, fix performance issues that you'll find down the line. You'll, if, if you only ever follow um, beginner tutorial series on YouTube, you'll find that you will eventually hit performance issues. So, um, yeah, I think this is probably one of the most important videos I think I've ever made, just purely because um, it will help set you above the rest. If, like, for example, if you're following Gorka Games, he's got hundreds of videos, but from a performance standpoint, um, it's not the best. Um, and even my videos at times uh, cover more of a beginner formatting rather than taking it into that intermediate um, area. So I'm going to try and change my ways from now on and start doing videos that will help your performance as well as get you into the swing of creating um, code within Unreal Engine. But hopefully you found this, this video useful. Thank you so much guys for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.